Hello reformers and welcome back to Fantasy Calradia and yet another class showcase. Now this time we're going to be doing something that I've never really done before and well it does have elements of things that I've experienced in the past i.e. only using neutral units or units that you can find in taverns and that's what I'm going to be doing for the most part but I am also going to be creating a gnome and I'm going to be I don't even know actually should I be a traveling merchant let's be a traveling merchant and we'll be a shop assistant and a bard yes we're actually going to be creating a bard this time around now otherwise what do we want to do lust for money and power being forced out of your home wonderlust well I think wonderlust would probably be pretty good because what I'm going to try to do is, as I've said, because there is no gnomish faction, I kind of felt like it was a good idea to use only neutral units. And so that's what I'm going to try and do. We're going to try and perform in every single town that we can. We're going to trade a little bit as well, if we can. And we're going to be mounted, if, if, if at all possible. So let me see here. Ah, yes, wonderful. Look at that. 12 charisma. That's fantastic. We also have four in trade. Three in leadership, our entertainment is at two at the moment. We're going to make that a nice round four, and I'm probably going to increase it to five very soon as well. Now, otherwise, we have four in writing skill, three in athletics. That's pretty nice. And uh, now, we, oh dear, oh yes, it, it always comes down to this, doesn't it? It always comes down to the name. I'm absolutely all for it, coming up with names for these things. Uh, okay, what about... Um, uh, pointy pointy hatted dolt there we go pointy hatted dolt that's what we're going to go with because he's a gnome right so <laughs> that's what we're going to go for and i'm going to go for a little bit of extra strength here because you never know you might need to fight a little bit i'm actually thinking maybe i should try and use guns with the bard but somehow that is probably not going to work out too well for us anyway let's go for entertainment five and then we're also going to go for Leadership 5, Trade 5. I'm just going to try and increase everything that I possibly can that has to do with being a bard. And maybe Pathfinding would be kind of good as well to get a little bit of that. Is there anything else I can go for here? I was actually thinking of Unarmed Combat, but I'm going to save that for another class showcase if if at all possible anyway i'm gonna increase persuasion i think a little bit there as well okay so the pointy hat adult will obviously be maybe using some pole arms some a little bit of archery maybe as well who knows but yes let's uh, let us randomize a little bit there we go that sounds that seems like a good one and now here's the thing this is a bit of a difficulty we don't know where we're gonna really be so i mean there's not really any necessity for me to start anywhere i guess i'm just gonna hmm i'm actually unsure let's start in ravidin i guess all right so we're now in ravidin and we're gonna attempt to play i want to perform something simple let's try and do that first okay what actually happened you failed utterly in your performance. Your renown and party morale go down. Really? Are you serious? Okay, what about something casual? Oh dear. This is not good, is it? Ah, oh, there we go, we did it. You gained 320 gold for your performance and raised your party's morale. All right, this seems, <laughs> this seems pretty RNG to me, but let's have a look and see whether there's something, something cool is gonna happen. Oh, look at that. You gained 1,200 gold for your performance and raised your party's morale. A band of groupies has decided to follow you everywhere you go. Let's make a speech. Let's see if the speech does anything. Your speech manages to entertain some and bore some others. You gain five renown. Well, that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's try and do something complex again, because I'd like to get an army of groupies. Wait a minute. Doesn't look like we actually have the groupies available, unfortunately. Yeah, there we go. We gained 660 gold. Yeah, so you can actually see that this is a fantastic way of making a little bit of cash. And obviously improving your party's morale. That's also something that you have to take into account. Pretty good. And I, it also gains us experience. 
it apparently also gains us experience. Let's try and perform something simple once again, because last time we failed that kind of badly. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay. Oh, there's the groupies. Okay, let's speak to them. Would you mind coming with me? <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. So now I have some farmers and peasant women. Okay, that's pretty fantastic. Okay, so I actually missed out on the band of groupies beforehand, which was a bit sad. So I guess I'm just going to continue doing this for a little bit. All right, so as you can see, we're now in the elf forest because I thought to myself, okay, maybe Ravidin has had enough of our wonderful performances because they actually started to give me failures all the time. I basically, I think, got five failures in a row. So I thought to myself, okay, maybe maybe they've had enough of us. So now, as you can see here, I have well, you know the same kind of army. Unfortunately, I haven't gained any additional groupies, which is, I guess, fine. But otherwise, I'm going to continue increasing our persuasion and our charisma. It seems like Fantasy Calradia does love to give you that diversity in the amount of builds that you can go for. So let's just improve our power strike a little bit, I suppose. Let's get a little bit in throwing weapons just in case we do a tournament, I guess. I mean, a tournament isn't even really necessary. You can see here I have 6,800 dinars. And that is literally just from performing. So as you can see here, let's just do a casual casual performance here. See if that actually goes anywhere. Yeah, there you go. 460 gold and raised our party's morale. Pretty nice. The only thing that I would say would be even better is if we had... Uh, what is it now? If we had trainer skill. Yes, if we had trainer skill, this would be the most perfect build. Because, think about it, if we're, I don't know, uh, if we're like level 15, 20, something along those lines, and we have about 5 in trainer skill, and we're going and running around, and we're performing at various towns, and we're gaining groupies, and farmers, and peasant women, and so on and so forth. And if you gain these, and then you wait, or perform in this case, multiple times, you're going to eventually be able to gain so many wonderful wonderful units and all kinds of things that it is literally going to make you an army in no time. Because you're going to have that trainer skill, you're going to have uh, the money to pay for the wages, and all kinds of wonderful things. So the bard is certainly something that you must not overlook. Even though I'm failing quite often here, I feel like the benefits far outweigh the deficiencies, I suppose you could say. But yeah, I think it would be a nice idea for us to take a look at the four ways in as well. Let's actually see what we're doing here too, because obviously we want to go and maybe fight a couple of looters and things like that and see what our combat specialty is like, because at the moment we just have a regular sword and a hunting crossbow. Maybe we should actually do a little bit of trading. So I'm going to go over here. I think we've actually gained another level. And as you can see, the specialty of this village is to sell tools for quite a low price. So as you can see, I want to buy tools for 307. So let's buy let's buy some tools. And let's actually see where we can go and sell those for a decent price. So let's go to Ravidin and see if we can do that. Assess the local prices. Let's see if they have any tools for sale here. Not entirely sure if they will. Did, did that work? Apparently the assessing the local prices thing might not work at the moment. Okay, it seems like it doesn't. But there you go. Okay, so we have tools here. I could sell these for 381, 356. I did buy them for 307. So it is a minor increase in the amount that I was able to gain. But bear in mind that if you find something like silk or... Well, I would assume that silk is pretty difficult to find, but still. This is very, very lucrative. You can see already that we are able to gain huge amounts of money without literally doing anything. I haven't had to fight anyone. And that kind of puts a little bit of a question mark on me specking into Power Strike, because we don't really need it, do we? I mean, if you want to, you can, of course, participate in a tournament. 
you know, something along those lines. I think that might be pretty cool. But yeah, you could actually go to a variety of different villages and see what their specialties are. And that's another wonderful addition that Fantasy Caradia has for the merchants. You know, we can buy some pork here for a low price. I personally don't really want to buy pork at the moment. I'd like to buy tools or oil or something along those lines. This village has no specialty, unfortunately. But yeah, it, it would probably be a good idea actually for us to go into Raven's Tavern because I did say that I was going to recruit units from Ravidin and indeed from Taverns. This is very strange. Okay, so why has the trade screen come up now? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so as you can see, we can buy wine here and sell it at Barry for a very small profit indeed. Hmm. Not exactly what I'm looking for, but let's get Kevtil. Oh yes, join me. I'm going to be getting every single person that I see in these taverns. And... And that's what I said at the very beginning, you know, I have done this kind of thing before where I have recruited only from taverns and only having neutral units. I think I did that in Blood and Steel, actually, where I created a sort of bandit, bandit unit, you know, that was able to run around and raid villages and all that sort of thing. It's pretty fun. So let's go over to Kudan and actually see what we can do in the tavern there. I have a feeling that we should be able to create a pretty strong army. As you can see here, we've got some hired blades already. And we've got Marnid here too. He's going to be joining us. He is a trader as well, which is going to make things quite nice because I think that in general having additional traders is always going to be helpful. I mean, we have seven in trade, which is just fantastic. So we're able to sell so many things. But this build and this character makes everything on the map valuable and that cannot be sa said for the same you know other classes look at this i've already received an offer of vassalage without doing anything which is kind of hilarious now i'm not entirely sure whether i should accept this i'm probably going to decline it actually because i don't really want to join the vagiers i actually did not want to join anyone i was actually thinking of just being my own person so yeah okay let's have a look here and see if we could find some things we could buy some wood buy some pottery I actually don't know whether this is gonna sell for a decent price elsewhere but I guess we might as well let's just try it out shall we let's just try it out I mean can't hurt can it let's see if we can go here I mean usually the specialty villages are the places to go ah Sell wool for a low price. Very nice. Okay. Oh, 90. 90 for wool. Okay, that should be pretty good. All right, so let's go to Ikemur and see if we can sell the wool here for a decent price. We bought it for 90. We could sell it for 139. So you can see here that we're gaining some pretty decent profit everywhere, with the exception of the pottery and the wood. That's not very good. So we can sell that. That's pretty decent. And we can, of course, do additional perf performances and all kinds of wonderful things. So, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut away and we're going to do a little bit of, well, recruiting. What other way is there to say it? I'm going to do a bunch of recruiting. We're going to try and get as many mercenary type units as possible. And I'm going to be trying to do a bunch of performances as well. Alright, so as you can see, we have now arrived at Amarad, and I've just leveled to six. So as you can see, we have three attribute points here. We're going to spend all of those in charisma, of course, and we're going to go for some more entertainment, some more leadership, more trade skill. Just going to make sure that we are absolutely p prepared for basically anything that comes across us. And oh yeah, I should also mention that I have a bunch more units, as you can see, mercenaries, horsemen and swordsmen. And uh, yeah, actually our money is going to skyrocket in just a moment because I've purchased a bunch of iron from the orcs. Now, I could not enter their town, unfortunately, but I could go to their villages and buy some iron there. So as you can see, we're going to be gaining a huge amount of money. Oh yes, you give me all of that. Very nice indeed. Now, I could also, of course, purchase some 
armaments, if I so desired, but technically we're a bard, and I don't know whether that's really necessary, to be honest. I mean, I want to, you know, roleplay as much as possible, so maybe that would be ill-advised, but I haven't headed in here just yet. Oh, a Calradian veteran skirmisher. Oh yes, that reminds me, actually. You know what that reminds me of? You can actually recruit Calradians. Yes, maybe we should return Calradia back to the Calradians. That seems to sound pretty good, doesn't it? Seems to sound like a pretty cool goal to have, considering that we're not using any random units, we're actually just using non, you know, neutral units. So, that might be pretty cool. Alright, so let's uh, perform something complex. Usually the complex thing is the best I've found so far. It seems to reward the most money. Ah, there's Aiden. Yes, he's a wizard. He is a wizard and he's going to be joining us. There's a mercenary crossbowman as well. And I'm punching everyone in sight, apparently. Yes, there we go. Yes, the complex performance gave us a pretty decent amount of cash right there. Now, what I'm trying to do, obviously, is I'm trying to do this as kind of pacifistly, uh, pacifistly, uh, that, that, does, that does not make sense, passively, I suppose, as possible. So, making money, making renown, making all kinds of things, just by performing. And let me tell you, when I've been off screen, I have not fought anyone. I have not fought anyone. Now, if you are obviously after battles and fighting things, then this character's probably not for you, but... I think it's a really cool change of pace, to be honest, because usually, you know, Warband, it's all about fighting things, you know, it's about fighting things and slapping people around and with your axes and your hammers and all sorts of things, and, you know, this gives you just that little bit more complicated gameplay, and I like it. I like it a lot, actually. So, let's get some more Calradians, shall we? Let's go into the tavern and see if there are any other companions here as well. Oh, an elven freebow. Well, I did say that I was going to recruit mercenaries, and they are technically mercenaries. So, I'm going to recruit them as well. And can we actually go to the, to the drow? I'm not entirely sure if we can, but yes. I'm actually missing out on quite a lot of things here. So, for example, I can buy some furs here. I actually don't know whether 285 is worth it for furs, but I suppose we're going to find out. Yeah, we can't go to the drow towns, unfortunately, so I guess I'm just going to make my way around to Jokala. Yeah, we've just gone on a complete round trip, almost, all the way around Calradia, and i got to say, I'm actually very much enjoying it. And it's weird, because you wouldn't think you know, you wouldn't think that not fighting anything would actually give you satisfaction and enjoyment, would you? Because, I mean, the game is, you know, has a decent combat system. And you want to be, you know, fighting people and having some fun in battles and things. But I'm just getting ourselves powered up. You know, we're powering ourselves up with some really, really pretty decent units. I mean, obviously they're not the greatest. I'm going to have to level them up significantly. But we're gaining so many units and being able to level those up eventually with just trainer skill is very unique, I think. I think it's pretty cool. So let's get Maraga here. She's a dwarf and a veteran mercenary mage. Oh, there you go. Join us for 2,200. Oh, wow. That was, that was pretty expensive. Okay, we can sell these first for a profit. I'm not going to sell the last one. Oh, these... Oh, I forgot to... Ah, oh, I forgot to... Preserve that fruit. Oh, that was my bad. Okay, let's sell that iron there as well. That's pretty cool, right? So you could just go to all kinds of villages, buy the specialty items, and then you can sell them for a profit if you have the trade skill. And I, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, why don't you do some battles and things like that? Well, I mean, that's the point. This is a character that approaches Warband from a completely unique perspective. And only in Fantasy Calradia I've seen this actually be possible. I mean, yeah, you know, in some other mods, you can be a trader, you know, you can be a trader, you can take certain items to certain places and gain huge amounts of money, but this is so much more freeform, and there's all the, yeah, there's all the truces expiring as well, that happens every single game, but it's absolutely fine, you could just click through it in a couple of seconds, but yes, that's what I mean, Fantasy Car Radio is very much doing the freeform thing, and that is 
very much in tune with Warband in general. Because when you first start up a game of Mountain Blade Warband, what are you going to do? You, well, that's the point. It's completely up to you. And I've now gained level 7. I have not fought anyone. I have not fought anyone. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, pretty crazy. So let's go for another point in entertainment. And I'm just going to keep improving the various bits of proficiency here because I might be doing a tournament. Who knows? I might be doing a tournament. So let's just go in here just to explore it. We're gaining huge amounts of money and experience just from running around randomly and going to wherever our heart takes us, basically. So I, I'd highly recommend trying this out. And obviously at the beginning of the video, you can see what I've specced into and everything. So it is, in my opinion, very much worth it. If you're playing Fantasy Calradia at the moment, or if you're thinking about playing it, then check it out. The link is in the description to download and it's completely free. And the amount of work that has gone into this is crazy. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. I want to perform something hard. Oh, let's do it. Let's see how that's going to go. Okay, that failed us. Oh, yes, that failed very badly. Okay, I want to see the rewards for the hard performance. A thousand gold. Wow, a thousand gold for that. Let's sell that fur. Let's buy a little bit of bread. Let's buy some grapes and some cabbage. Not my furs. Thank you very much. There we go. Let's go into the tavern. I think I'm forgetting to go into taverns as well because there's just so many things to do. I can perform, I can trade, I can do all kinds of wonderful things. And on top of that, we are constructing ourselves a pretty awesome army as well, filled with all kinds of different personalities and units and oh, just absolutely amazing. Oh, I'm going to get sick if we don't murder someone soon. How about we slaughter some peasants? Oh, wait. First we capture them, then we torture them, and then we kill them. Sounds like a plan. Okay, you decide what to do. I only hope it will be messy, bloody, and cruel, says the demon. Yes, it's pretty cool that we have got a demon now. And there's another 840 gold. And oh, look at this. The elves are now offering me a vassalage, which I got to say is pretty cool. But I'm going to be declining that too, because I still don't know what I'm going to be doing. Maybe you, maybe you want to, you know, give me your two cents in the comments. Maybe you want to say, hey, which faction should we join? Because maybe we shouldn't join any, you know, because we are technically a very free spirit, I suppose you could say. There's 160 for some leather work right there. And I'm going to go to Uxcarl to maybe sell that for a little bit of cash. But you can see that I've literally not had any bandits try to attack us because we've gained those groupies from the very start. And they've enabled us to have just that much more freedom to be able to do what we so desire. And there's some Calradian cavalry right there. And I can also recruit some more Calradians. It's just absolutely insane. And I've kept this up just from doing performances which is amazing in itself so yeah next time we're going to be doing some battles with the bard and i was actually partially hoping that the instruments would be able to deal damage so if the mod creator or the person that's currently working on the mod is watching this then maybe you could add some combat instruments <laughs> it doesn't seem very realistic but I suppose we are currently playing with demons and dwarves and elves. So what is realism, really? You know, I'd like to hit someone over the head with a loot, wouldn't you? Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.